Hey everyone, it's Tracy, and in this quick tip tutorial, we're going to take a look at the mirror filter in Affinity Photo. Whether you're using shapes, text, or an image like this, it's going to allow you to create a fun kaleidoscope effect that in some instances can also create a seamless pattern. I'm going to show you how to use this on an image as well as some text that I've created. So let's get started. I've created a 3000 pixel square document and I've set my DPI to 72 because I don't plan to print this. If you do, you want to make sure that your DPI is at least 300. Now, since it's fall here in the Chicago area, I'm going to use a fall leaf image from the stock studio. One thing to keep in mind though, when you're searching for an image is something with a very shallow depth of field. In other words, one part is very much in focus and everything else is blurred is going to give you a very different output than one that does not. The one with a shallow depth of field that already starts with a lot of blur is not going to be as crisp at the end. I like this one from Pixabay. I'm going to drag that in and I like it for a couple of reasons. The first is it has some variation in color, which is going to lend itself very well to the overall effect. And it's also even across the entire image as far as the blur. Now that I've dragged this in, there's a couple of things that I want to point out. First, this image is much larger than my canvas. I don't need all of this extraneous information outside of the bounds of the canvas. All that it's doing is adding to the size of my file. So I want to get rid of that. The second is anything that you pull from the stock studio is not rasterized. The mirror filter does not have a live version to it. In other words, it doesn't have a version of the filter that can be formed on a non rasterized image. It's a destructive filter. So if I go up to my filters menu, you can see that my filters, these destructive filters are all grayed out because this hasn't been rasterized yet. So I'm going to take care of both of those issues with one step. First, I just want to make sure that this is lined up where I want it. So I think I'm going to set this leaf in the middle and then I'll right click and choose rasterize and trim. What that's done is not only rasterize it so I can now use my filters, it's also trimmed away any of the excess information outside of the bounds of the canvas and thus it lowered my overall file size. So one important note before we continue, as I mentioned, this is destructive. So once you've applied the effect and the dialog box is closed, that's it. If you want to make changes, you need to start over because there's no live mirror filter. There isn't anything that you can hop back into and adjust. So if you're working with something like a set of shapes you've created, or an original piece of text that you've pulled together, I would recommend duplicating it and rasterizing that duplicate. That way you always have the original to go back to. Now, since I pulled this from the stock studio, I'm not going to worry about that. But if it was something I had created myself, I would duplicate it first. And I'll show you that in the next part of the lesson when we talk about text. So with my layer selected, I'm going to go up to filters, down to distort, and then choose mirror. And you can see that it's already mirrored once because if I pull up this dialog box, you can see that the number of mirrors automatically starts with one. Now we're gonna jump past that for a second and talk about these two, input and output. These are going to control the angle of the mirrors creating the effect, as well as the output of the overall composition. If I start changing the angle of the input, even with just one mirror, you can see that it's changing the overall feel of the image. As I drag it around, I'll get a different effect each time because the angle of the mirror or multiple mirrors as we add them is changing how it reflects the objects in the image. Output is going to affect the final outcome and the angle of it. So if I start dragging this around, you can see that the mirroring itself isn't changing, but the angle of the image is. So I'm gonna bring this back to zero and I'll bring this one back to zero. Let's talk about adding mirrors. If I drag this slider up, it's adding mirrors and as it does, it's changing the image because it's changing how it's reflecting that original image. I can change my input as I do this and get a different feel as I drag it around. One thing I want to bring to your attention is that you can create a perfectly symmetrical and therefore seamless image using the mirror effect as long as you pay attention to your settings. First, the number of mirrors has to be even. Odd numbers are not going to create symmetry. So set it eight. You can see that my corners match, which means I'm going to be able to tile this seamlessly. If I change this to nine, the corners are different. I'm going to bring this back down to eight. 
Now input, the angle doesn't matter, odd or even, whole numbers or not, you're going to end up with a symmetrical image as long as this is even, and we'll talk about output in a second. So I can drag this around, I can even make this something like 46, and it's still going to be symmetrical. However, the output has to either be 0, 90, 180, or 270 in order to create a symmetrical image. If it's anything else, no matter what you have set for your input and your mirrors, it's not going to tile seamlessly. I can continue dragging the number of mirrors up, changing my input, making any of the adjustments I want until I find something that I like. So let's see what 14 looks like. And maybe I'll change my input to 315. I really like the colors in that. It's kind of addictive after a while. You start to want to see what comes next. I'm going to make sure that my output stays 270 here. I think that angle's fine. Once you get into something like a circular pattern, this doesn't matter so much anyway. But again, you need to make sure it's one of those four numbers if you plan to tile this. So I'm just going to click apply and you can see that that's it. I can't double click this and bring that dialog back up. So again, that's why it's important that you make sure that you duplicate it if it's something that you don't want to have to recreate. So now if I go up to my layers and choose new pattern layer from selection, I can drag this up and you can see that I get a seamless pattern from this because I paid attention to the numbers in my dialog box. Let's take a look at how this works with text because you can create a seamless pattern with that as well. All right, so I have some text that I've created here. I used Futura PT as my font because it's nice and chunky and bold and I find that works better with this but go ahead and play around with different fonts and see what works best. Now because this is text and it's not rasterized if I go up to my filters you can see that I don't have access to them. So this is where I would actually duplicate this because I don't want to have to recreate this. I'm just going to command J to duplicate it. I'll turn off that original layer and I'm going to right click and rasterize this. Now I don't need to choose trim because there's nothing outside. So I'll just choose rasterize. And now I have a pixel image. So I can go up to my filters and do the same thing that I did with the image. I'll just choose mirror. And I'm going to start out with my angle at something like 135. I like starting out with something like this with the text. And I'll just start dragging up. You can see I'm starting to get some really cool shapes from that text. The further you go up, the less recognizable it is as text. I like to just kind of play around with the different input settings until I find something that I like. So I really like this shape. I think I'm going to just play around with it a little bit more and see if I can get it to go to the corners. Let's just bring that up. Again, you don't have to have a even number on this. It's still going to be symmetrical as long as you have an even number of mirrors. So I quite like this. I'm going to go ahead and set this at 16 mirrors. I'll click apply. And if I turn this into a pattern layer, I'm going to turn this one off because this is transparent. I can drag this down. And again, I have a seamless pattern that I've created from that original line of text. So can you see yourself creating maybe some unique pattern motifs from text or perhaps creating some fun abstracts using images? Let me know in the comments below and please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions about anything you learned in this tutorial. If you've enjoyed my teaching style and would like to watch my full length classes where I share more detail on many of the tools that I use here in my tutorials, check out my full length Skillshare classes or my classes on my own learning site, The Creator Collage. I've put both links below. So I have lots more tutorials coming, so be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.